They're real strong on Fox Low in the zone, but I thought we played a pretty patient game, and I would give them credit to say the same thing about them. They played very patient, too. They didn't get a ton of chances, but when they did, they finished them. So um, they gotta, you got to find ways to win games like that, and we were able to do it then. Good news, you got Larson. I mean, he's really out of goal, right? Mm -hmm. Three games in the goal. Uh, nice to have a guy you can depend on when you need a goal. Yeah, well, and I think you could say the same about a couple of guys, and that's why, you know, you're going to – you're going to string together some wins. You have to have a bunch of guys contributing. And uh, he's been probably our most consistent as of late, but obviously Phil scored a couple of good goals the last two games. And uh, Luke has been doing it all year. Uh, Jamie Tardiff, Porter, Sigamant. You got, you got look up and down the lineup, and you got guys that are contributing right now, and it's going to help your, your team's success. Uh, Armia tonight, I mean, can't, coming off the game, I think you called maybe the best game of the year for him. There was several shifts where he, Played extremely well and then sets up the, the game winning goal. What did you think of his game tonight? Uh, I thought Joel was really good. Um, I think the, the, the biggest difference that we saw or that we're seeing right now um, is he's competing harder, but a part of that is just he's healthy and he's stronger on the stack. And, and you see how many times he goes after pucks and he ends up coming out with it, whether there's one or two guys in there. And it's not all just the toe drag, it's being heavy on it and winning that battle, and that's going to be key for him. Because I thought he, he does a good job of using his body to stay over Fox, and he's a big kid, and he's got a big frame, and he's going to continue to get bigger. Um, but we've seen some some really good things in his game, I think, in the last couple of weeks here. Yeah, it was about I don't know, 10, 12 minutes left. He had a shift where I think he broke up three different attempts by then to yeah. exit the zone, which is something that he just he hadn't really been doing. He right. was just kind of coming back. And, and I think that's uh, the hand getting better and, and feeling more confident on his stick and, and not uh, playing in pain all the time. Hopefully that's the case. And uh, you know I thought it was just um, you know that's the way he's got to play. Be effective every night. He's got to have his nose in there and he's got to be playing hard and, and working for loose pucks. And then when he's got it, he can make some pretty good things happen. So he's got to play with it a lot more. You also like to have him trying to learn that sort of game around so many guys who already have it, Porter, yeah. Zygamandis, and, and Larson. Well, I think the thing that helps him, too, is that he plays with Cat Natchy and, and, and Gillies, and Gillies will go get it for him. Uh, he's a great four checker. I think Cat's a left shot, so his natural is to move it over to the right side. So Joel, he obviously likes having the puck a lot. And I think part of maybe what hurt Joel earlier in the year, um, along with the injury, was the fact that he knew he was playing with good players, and not that Cat and Gillies aren't, but maybe more high-profile players. It felt like he had to get on the puck all the time. Um, he's a guy who needs to play with. He's played his best games with guys like Sunder, Waugh, Cat, Natchy, Gillies. You know, he, he seems to be really comfortable with those players, guys that will get good speed, will forecheck, and get him the puck. And, and um, hopefully they can continue to play well. Not a strong game uh, from Nate tonight. He's kind of on the roll, even though the goals against Evans might be a little high. But you, you gained W, and that's that's the big thing. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't think he had a ton of really tough opportunities tonight. They were patient. They, they the chances they got were pretty good ones. We didn't give up a heck of a lot. Um, but you know, he just seems to win hockey games, and that's pretty important from what I understand. So, <laughs> really, yeah. uh, uh, he was healthy tonight. You know, he, he came off a couple of games where, uh, you know, he just wasn't as sharp as he needed to be, and he'll, uh, he'll be back in there. Not, I'm not criticizing why I asked the sure. question, but one of the best face-off men in the league is Zig, and he's not yeah. taking face -offs. So what, what goes on? Yeah, a part of it is the other guys got to learn those jobs, too. And um, you notice that uh, there were a few times uh, in the game tonight where he took a, a couple of face-offs. He actually took the face-off that we lost in the first period against Texas that they scored them. So it, it works both ways. Um, he's a great face-off guy, and when push comes to shove, you want him taking the draws, but we also have to have other guys taking them too. And right now, uh, the way our lineup is, is we took him out of the center position and moved him over to him, and that has a big part of it too. But when him and Phil play together, he takes him on the right, Phil takes him on the left. So he hasn't been playing, he's been playing with Porter more, uh, so Porter's been taking more of the face-offs. Sort of a nice problem to have in like seven, eight guys who can all play center. Yeah, and then you got Larson who can go in and take a face off. Um, Cat's actually pretty darn good at face offs for, for his first year in this league. Uh, he's done a really good job. Timmy Shadow's got much better on face offs. It, it's an art form, and it's something that, uh, you know, Zig spends a lot of time working with guys on it. And, you know, that's going to be a big part of their development in their game because if Phil or, you know, any of those guys, Larson, they want to play 
center ice position in the National League, you, you got to be getting draws. And, and you know, uh, I think Phil went up there. We we uh, looked at his stats. The first game, I think he was 36% on faceoffs, and he got better. But you got to learn how important those are uh, at the National League level. So. Two straight games where the only time you led was was in the overtime. Uh, how was that? You know, uh, heart wise on you. Yeah, it's not great for, for the coach, but uh, you know, it's, it says a lot about our team. I mean, there's not a lot of quit in the locker room. We were down three on on Sunday and came back, and we played from behind all night tonight. And it, it could have been one of those games where you get frustrated and you get off your game plan. I think we're we're getting to the point where we understand how we need to play to be successful. And if we keep pushing and keep playing this the right way. Uh, we're going to get our chances, whether it's drawing a penalty or it's getting that chance around the net or whatever it is. Just keep following that process, and we're going to be in good shape. And, and not a bad thing to get wins against two teams that seem to play totally opposite, where yeah. the, the stars are just wide open, yeah. flying up and down the ice, and, and this team is like the devils or something. And, and the key to that, Matthew, is that we played the same way, no matter who we were playing against. That you don't want to get into a run and gun game with Texas because they'll kill you. Uh, and, and you don't want to be impatient against a team like Iowa where you're just, you know, everybody's flying to the net all the time because uh, you give up easy odd man rushes and opportunities that way and that's how they're going to capitalize. Uh, so I was, I was real happy with the way we played the last two games.